Hello everybody, this is CJ Wiley with more adventures on the road. I am out in the middle of nowhere in uh, southern Louisiana at this park. You can see lots of interesting sounds. It says there's uh, bald eagles out here. I don't know if they're still here, but I just saw a sign that uh, said they were part of the natural habitat. I've been looking for alligators. I got my uh, staff with me. Hey, I hope you watched my uh, video on how to do the exercises for uh, getting a powerful pool stroke using the seven foot staff. I've had several people contact me that they have and uh, seeing, you know, noticeable differences, which you will, you know, like uh, my whole thing in teaching and in life is uh you know if you're having trouble making a change a lot of times it's better to find a way to exaggerate it like uh you know i changed my pool stance after my first professional tournament and uh you know that that was kind of a big decision but when i learned a better way to do it i just knew that i had to make that change and man, it had, it just literally changed my life. But when I was making the change, I felt like I was too close to the ball compared to how I was uh, standing before. But, you know, uh, up to a limit, the closer you can get to your target, the better. And in pool, the primary target is the cue ball. I think a lot of people don't uh, realize that. They get caught up in, like, aiming at the object ball. I don't aim at the object ball. I connect to the object ball. I aim at the cue ball and then uh, change the angle uh, relative to where I'm hitting the cue ball. You can either do that with outside English and spin the ball, or you can just cue it to the inside and, uh, and don't spin it. Just go straight through the ball. And it's not the deflection that creates the angle. It's the perception. And then if it does deflect it's a positive thing because it'll overcut the ball slightly and therefore I always line up to hit the ball a little bit fuller you know I play the inside of the pocket and then I hit the ball I always said to myself touch of inside accelerate cue it to the inside accelerate it's just a hair a hair of inside I said touch of inside because it gives you a touch that's different than playing uh, you know, the outside English game. It's a different feel, you know. And I've played Efren many, many, many hours. And that's what, uh, you know, he's able to do a lot of those things that I do. Uh, I asked Dennis Arcola which one he prefers. Do you use the outside and spin it or the inside and just cue it a touch to the inside? And he said, well, it depends. He said, if I'm playing on loose pockets and new cloth, I'll use outside as much as I can. But if I'm playing on uh, tight pockets and worn cloth, like gambling situations, that's what I always preferred. He said, I'll use a little bit of inside or a touch of inside, as we call it, um, every, every shot he can. Because you want to be consistent. I mean, whichever way you go, it's just like in golf. You either draw the ball or fade the ball. Uh, there's no other way like with pro golfers they don't try to hit the ball straight unless it's shorter shots but w with any length you get more margin of error um, moving the ball from right to left or left to right it creates zones it's 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 amazing how it'll change your game look at this here so peaceful out here so peaceful indeed. So when I was making these changes with my stance and felt like I was too close, what I did was I made myself choke up to the front of the wrap and play for like 20 or 30 minutes a day, really until I could beat the ghost playing nine ball with my hand in the front of the, you know, at the very, you know, where my hands past the front of the wrap, really. So it makes the cue, you know, short, obviously, relatively speaking, and there's three things that need to synchronize, uh, and, and it's good to be aware of this. I, I teach people uh, references on every single aspect of the game. So these three things that need to synchronize is um, your distance to the ball, where you hold the cue, 
and your bridge length. So if you hold the cue far back, you know, like, like Shane has an extra long cue, but when he's playing a rig with a regular cue, he holds it at the very back. So therefore, he's farther from the ball and his bridge is longer. He and I hold the cue uh, very similarly, and uh, people have a hard time telling because I hold the cue farther up, puts me closer to the ball, my bridge length is shorter. So my range short game probably is a hair better than his, and his range with the long game is better than mine. That would make sense. There again, like in golf, I'm, I'm like hitting a seven iron on all my shots and, and he's hitting like a, a five iron or a three iron, so to speak. And it's not an exact, uh, that analogy isn't exact. I'm, I'm just trying to make a point that if you feel like you're out of sync, especially if you feel like you're reaching for the ball, then you may need to synchronize where you're holding the cue relative to your distance from the ball. And the way I measure my distance to the ball is from the front of my right hip. If you measure from that point to the ball, uh, if you're standing correctly, when you do that, the line from your hip to the ball is going to point to the left of the target because your eyes are about five inches uh, uh, from your hip line. A lot of people play the game on their hip line. Once I show them the difference uh, of what it's like to get right on the line and go down on it, I mean, that's where people, you know, their games improve like two or three balls in a pretty short amount of time because now they can connect to the balls uh, before they were standing three or four inches too far to the left. And your eyes won't be able to detect that. You'll make, uh, basically, they make an automatic adjustment. So when people are like three or four inches off, I have never seen anybody yet that actually knows they are. They don't think they are until I show them. I've got some ways that I can uh, show you where there's no doubt at all that you're off. And, and when you're coming down on the ball, you're making that allowance and going a little bit over to the right, you know, that three or four inches to get on the line of the shot. But you're coming down on an angle where I'm coming straight down. Efren's coming straight down. Dennis Orcolo is straight down. Uh, Shane, straight down. Sky Woodward, straight down. I mean, we're on the line of the shot actually uh, to be more specific i only have two alignment positions to start with and that's i connect the ball center to center or the center of the cue ball to the edge and from those two alignment positions i can make any shot on the table and uh, because now i'm using that ability my eyes had that people are kind of wasting to make adjustments i'm using the ability my eyes have to go over basically a half a ball so when I line up center to center, I can make any shot up to a half a ball shot. You know, center to edge is half ball. So once I get to that line or that angle, then I just go to center to edge, and then I make every shot up to as thin as you can, pay, you can cut it. And uh, so the, the uh, key to this is the alignment. Just like shooting a pistol, you know, uh, it's exactly like shooting a pistol when I show how it's done, but if you don't know how the footwork works, it, uh, it won't be possible for you to do. And uh, that's what takes a little time when I teach people. It takes about two hours, you know, for most people to really click and start getting it. And then if they work on it for two or three weeks, it'll, it'll change uh, how they see pool and play pool because they'll be connected to the game or before they didn't realize it, but when you're standing off that line every time and trying to find the, the shot line, like to a ghost ball or to a contact point, uh, you're not connecting the balls fully together. They're separate. And then, then when you get down, you're connecting them. I'm connected the whole time. So when I get down, if I undercut one, uh, I know exactly how to fix it. And I'll usually just set up the shot if I'm practicing again and make the little bit of an adjustment, uh, usually just going to touch more to the inside or sometimes it's my tempo. If I'm not accelerating, uh, I'll undercut balls sometimes. So those two things are the only things I really need to make any adjustment or be consciously aware of. But I'll set it up again until I make it, you know, preferably hitting the center of the pocket. And then I'll go on to something else so uh, anyway I'm having uh, memories of Scotty Townsend uh, when I walk through these uh, these bayous uh, you know seeing these alligator signs and uh, water snakes <laughs>
Yeah. Not a big snake fan either. But Scotty Townsend wasn't scared of any of them. Uh, you know, I think he wrestled alligators and he was uh, bizarrely strong. He could lift a car up. Uh, I've heard him uh, doing that for, you know, a fifth of whiskey. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like give a redneck a dare and a six pack and they can do anything. Well, give Scotty Townsend a fifth of Jack and he can lift a car up. <laughs> he might twirl it on his finger, who knows. But uh, Scotty, last time he and I played was in Florida. And beforehand, uh, we all went out to eat. And there was a girl there, because we were eating uh, seafood, shellfish. And this girl said that she had an allergic reaction to uh, the iodine that's in, uh, in the shellfish. And it'd make her glands swell up. And I was like, wow, I've never heard that before. Makes sense, you know, I mean iodine but uh but that's the first i'd ever heard of it so we go back to the pool room after i ate a bunch of shellfish and uh, i started playing scotty and i had kind of a tight t-shirt on and about two games into it i feel like the t-shirt is uh strangling me <laughs> and i went i went over and uh you know told uh, some people there I said man it's weird I said I, f I says my neck like swollen up and sure enough that iodine had uh, given me that reaction and it swelled up my uh, glands a little bit and it, it felt like my uh, t-shirt was just getting smaller and smaller it went away but uh, it took it took uh, just a little while but I snapped out of it and we had a good match we've played several times and I miss Scotty, man, you know, if, if you knew him, uh, uh, give me a comment and uh, share a story if you have one. I, I really uh, had a lot of great times with Scotty. I've told about being in Las Vegas and teaming up with him and beating everybody after I won the World Series of uh, Tavern Pool. But uh, we, we've been around each other quite a few times. And again, the world's kind of a little less exciting uh, at least the pool world without Scotty in it but uh, anyway I'm gonna get back to uh, to my little hike and uh, hope you're having a great day till next time this is CJ over now